So when we're trying to graph this, it's best to, to graph it first um, before we try to write the equations in piecewise form. So to graph it first, we need to figure out where the x-coordinate of the vertex is. So to find the x-coordinate of the vertex, we take the thing inside of the absolute value and you set it equal to 0. So we do that. 8 minus 2x equals 0. Negative 2x equals negative 8. So x equals 4. <clears throat> okay, yellow is awful to see. Let me change that back to something you can see. <clears throat> okay, so 4 would be um, potentially where it's going to be. So let's see. If x is 4, then where is the y value? So that means that the y, no, nope, that's where it crosses the other axis. And that won't erase. <clears throat> sure it does. So the y value is found by plugging in the x value. So y is negative 3 times the absolute value of 8 minus 2x plus 1. And let's see what happens. When we plug in a 4. Oops, now I'm running out of room. Plus 1. So uh, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8. Uh, so this becomes a 0 here. Uh, negative 3 times the absolute value of 0 is also 0, which means we have a y value of positive 1. Okay, so what we've just done is figure out where the where the vertex of this absolute value is going to be. <clears throat> so it's going to be there at positive 1, comma, positive 4. Make that a little bit smaller. Maybe red. Let's see if you can see red. 4, 1. <clears throat> okay, so there's the vertex at 4, 1. And now we know there's a negative in front, so from our transformations, that's going to tell us that the graph will be going down. Um, so let's figure out where some points are so we can plot some things. Let's change it to a smaller pen, and let's plot. So we have an x coordinate and a y coordinate. I'm going to go 1 to the left of 4, which is 3. So I already know that's 4, 1. And then I'm going to go 1 to the right, which is at 5. So I'm going to plug each of these values into my equation over here and figure out what the y values are. Okay, so when we do that, we get a, at when x is 3, y is negative 5, I believe, since I've already done that in my brain. And at positive 5, we also get that the y value is negative 5. Okay. So just verify by plugging those values into that equation and getting those two y values just to make sure that you know how to do it. Okay, don't just take my word for it. Okay, if you don't believe me, verify. So pause the video and go verify that. <clears throat> so if we're going to do a little sketch um, as best we can, we start at the vertex and we draw. Oops, my finger missed it. And you go back to the vertex, and you draw like that. Okay, so, uh, you know, that's about the graph of this negative 3 absolute value of 8 minus 2x plus 1. Okay, so the graphing part is done. <clears throat> you find the x-coordinate by just looking at the absolute value stuff, and then you find the y-coordinate of the vertex by plugging that number back into the entire equation and solving it down. So now let's create our piecewise function. So we need to do, uh, so there's, of course, there's the middle of our two graphs right through here. Mm -hmm. I can do better. So we have the left of that point and we have the right of that point. So we have four as the dividing line. 
So the left graph, the slope of the left graph. So let's come back here and let's just use our nice fingers to count. We start at this point and we go up one, two, three, four, five, six units and overwrite one unit. So this has a slope of positive six. Okay, now there are a couple of ways that we can calculate. Sorry, you can't see that yellow on that white background. There you go. <clears throat> There's a couple of ways we can calculate the y-intercept. Okay, personally, I like to count because I'm really good at counting. I've been doing it since I was a kid. I count down six more, one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, and then six more, one, two, three, four, five, six, and over one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, until I get all the way down to where it crosses the y-intercept which, if I count incorrectly, is negative 25. I did not count correctly. That should be a negative 23 instead. <clears throat> a wee bit off. So then the equation of that line is 6x minus 23. So that's the equation for the left part of our absolute value graph. <clears throat> so now let's talk about the right side of our absolute value graph. So we'll come back here. <clears throat> and once again, we're going to count from one point to the next point. So here I go down... Six units over one unit, which means I have a, where'd I go? There it is, a slope of negative six. And if I continue that slope, counting up six units and over one, and then up six units and over one, and then up six units and over one, I believe, just like last time, I believe that I hit the y-axis at positive 25. So this equation, negative 6x plus 25, okay, for the equation on the right. Now, as a piecewise, we, of course, would be, ooh, that's tiny now. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Squishing these two equations together, your left equation, 6x minus 23, and your right equation, negative 6x plus 25. And the dividing line is positive 4. So that's probably the easy part. Okay, because that's the x-coordinate of your vertex. Now, I know it's hard to see, but that is the whole entire problem there, and it only took eight and a half minutes.